Um, no. Okay, I guess we go. We'll go for it. Uh, the actual Unix philosophy. What is the Unix philosophy? Um, this video is going to be short and sweet because, but we're going to be talking a lot more about the Unix philosophy throughout all these videos that I have. And I, I really need to clarify what it is. There's been a lot of misunderstanding about what the Unix philosophy is out there. So I'm actually going to cite from the people who created it. Um, and this is indirectly from Wikipedia and, um, oh God, what do I have his name here? Oh, I've, I've, I'm spacing on his name. He's an Oxford professor. He does a, he does a great presentation on this. But I can't remember his name. I'm really sorry. But so this is it. Doug McIlroy wrote, and, uh, and he's the guy who invented pipes, you know, the idea of chaining something together in a pipe. He says, the Unix philosophy is this, writing programs that do one thing and do it well. And I'm going to interject. That's when everybody stops. I think that's it. But as uh, this professor suggests and many others, write, it goes on to say that you need to write programs that work together and write programs to handle text streams because it is the universal interface. So these two secondary parts to the Unix philosophy are forgotten all the time. All the time. They are forgotten all the time and people wonder what's up with pipes and stuff. And I'm going to... The reason I have to explain this is because you'll hear me go off on other technologies that I will not necessarily uh, throw into the bus right now. I'll wait till another day to do it. But usually when I do, it's because they use a monolithic approach that discounts uh, all of all three of these. Okay, And I'm going to let you imagine what they are. If you want to take a guess right now at some of the biggest applications to be used in the Unix world, the Unix and Linux world, are not actually following the Unix philosophy. And you're like, well, why? What's the benefit of following Unix philosophy? What do I get because I follow the Unix philosophy? And that we're going to kind of go on. So let's let's finish this here. People get this wrong all the time. They, they do the one thing well and they forget the rest. Personally, my favorite list of clarifications. So this, uh, one of the uh, designers and creators of X, the X window system, which has had problems, but it, you know when it came up, it was nice. Mike uh, Genkers says, small is beautiful. Make each program do one thing well. Make, build a prototype as soon as possible. Choose portability over efficiency. Store data in flat text files. Okay, JSON, yes, YAML, yes, but maybe just, you know, column, column files with white space between each line. One thing per line. Use software leverage to your advantage. In other words, take that each piece of software and compare, the, you know, use them combined. Uh, use shell scripts to increase leverage and portability. This people don't like hearing this, but this is where this is why creating a shell script is way better to initially get an idea of what it is you're building. If you even if you want to build something else later, avoid captive user interfaces. I have to use this graphic user interface. I have to use this one Unix program and nothing else. Uh, there's sort of some you know takes on that these days because you know we have kind of a monolith model, and then we have nine every make every program a filter. And people don't know what filters are. Uh, a filter is just taking the output of one program and feeding it into the input of another program. This, this is the most fundamental idea of Unix pipes. And if you don't know about Unix pipes, I mean, we can talk about this separately, but, but that's what's up. That's when you take the idea, you take, and this allows you to do things like this. Let's say I wanted to put the date right here. So I can type, um, you know, exclamation point, exclamation point, and then I can type H now, and this is a program. So this causes my VI to read the input on that line, replace the current line with the input uh, from the program that's going to run. So this runs a program, and it puts that thing right there. I didn't have to do any extension to VI. I could have done this with VI, and not any, you're not even Vim. It would have worked because these are these tools in in the unix world have all been built to use the unix philosophy and people throw out the benefit of writing filters and tools like this all the time and they put everything into a single program uh let me give you another idea so another example so you'll see me doing this all the time so i can actually write a program site so zlink uh, uh this is a program that that runs my zelda cast and searches for everything that has this word in it fi philosophy for that keyword and then it outputs all the lines of of that of those little Kasten to the output. Now I can send this line to the the bash command line underneath. 
and take its output and replace this line with itself. So you can write code inside a VI that generates output. Could be even another code. So let me show you what I do. So I go uh, exclamation point, exclamation point, bash. That sends that line to the bash, takes its output, and replaces the line with the output. And I get a line that it, it went out, fetched from my re repository, which thing has a, a unique identifier. If it were more than one, it would have done that, and it puts that there. That is not a plugin. That's not a plugin. That's just using the Unix philosophy. So I had to give a, a little quick demonstration of that. I'll do other videos on using Vim filters and combining Vim with filters. But, but this is um, the Unix philosophy is the reason that when people approach learning the terminal and Unix or Linux, that you need to consider the ecosystem of it. It's not like just, you know, Vim or just this IDE or just this or that. It's the combination of all the pieces together that make it powerful. And when you see me make decisions about what I use and what are the most powerful pieces of that tool set that combined make a singular experience, that's why. That's why. That's why it has to have, you have a hard time pegging me down on whether which you know uh, development environment that I like or or this or that because because it's not just one thing. It's the entire thing, and you have to understand the basis for the Unix philosophy before you see the value of any of these other things. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. If they do, they don't use it properly uh, because they don't they don't leverage all of those things. So. Yes, I absolutely use multiple text editors. I use Ed and VI. Sometimes Ed is a better text editor than VI. You know what can't be done that way? Emacs, you know, and I'm going to just say it. I have a lot of really good friends that use Emacs. I will never use it. Why? Because it doesn't follow the Unix philosophy of their own admission. And Stallman says the Unix philosophy is not that big a deal. The guy who made, who ported, ported, not made, uh, all of the, you know, commands and stuff that ended up being in Linux for GNU, you know, doesn't even think there's value in the Unix philosophy. Because pause on that for a second. Uh, even Torvalds uses Emacs, a micro version of Emacs. So I'm not against Emacs. If you want a, a really monolithic, all things are done in this thing, you can't escape it. That's fine. But don't you dare say that that is consistent with the Unix philosophy because it is fundamentally and categorically against the Unix philosophy. The Unix philosophy is writing lots of things that do one thing really well and having those things connect and having their, their method of communication be simple text output, text input and output. That's it. That's it. And then you, uh, you, you add filters and everything and you, you can get around uh, all those, those different things that are happening. Okay, so uh, one last a little quick example of this before we leave it. Um, so, so like if I wanted, you know, the idea of, um, of, of like, you know, you can echo something, right? And then you could uh, send that to something else, right? And you see people do different commands all the time with set and awk and tr and all that. I don't necessarily like those, but you could, you could change it to do any number of things. You could say, I want to go to TR and I want to cap, I want all the S, all the S's to be, uh, to be capitalized with S, I guess. Uh, and I'm doing it wrong. I might have to kill this video. Oh, there we go. So, so that just capitalizes. So that's the idea, right? TR is just a tool that does one thing. It does one transformation as it goes. And you can pipe one thing to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. So pipes are an implementation of the Unix philosophy, the very most important implementation of the Unix philosophy. Everything in Unix is a pipe. Everything in Unix is a file, and, and it can be piped to something else, including uh, everything you type, all the processes are all in slash proc, and we'll talk about that another day. So uh, the moral of the story is, hey, look, there's our people. Uh, I prefer Vim. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end the stream there. There's lots of opinions on this. I do there would be.